Hello everybody, Nathan here. Recently I did a freelance project for Category 5 Technology TV and they asked me to do some behind the scenes work as well just to kind of show what all went into the creation process of different aspects that I did. So we are going to be looking at the credits scene and for some reason, there we go, Numbs Lock was uh, not on on my keyboard which is weird because it always is. So this is the credits file and we have basically this is a 360 camera so let me explain things a little bit first off here this is set up in a 360 scene so if i select the camera here and go over into the camera tab uh, it's a panoramic with a equal equal rectangular um camera type so if we go to the camera view and put something here and then go ahead and render this frame out you will see this is pretty much rendering a 360 image. Now it's really hard to tell because the background's black, but the Jeff Weston and the Sasha Demetrius, I'm probably announcing that wrong. Um, if we actually look at the scene, uh, the Jason, uh, whoops, the or Jeff Weston is way over on the side there and Sasha is on the side here. So they're actually on the two sides of the camera, but in that image, everything from a full circle is put onto a flat plane. And this uh, is processed by YouTube and they do their magic and they make it as a 360 video. So basically what this file entailed was, oh no, oh, phew, I was gonna say, I hope I didn't delete that. I created a text object which uh, was just this. And I duplicated this a whole bunch of times to create all of the different text objects because I had to convert the text to a mesh. So let me just demonstrate that real quick. Shift D to duplicate. And now I have a duplicated mesh. So right now I can edit and I can type. Uh, Alt C will convert this to a mesh object. Now I have nodes and edges and faces and all that stuff. I can't anymore just type in new letters. Um, and so I did this a whole bunch and every time removing doubles, you see there's 1,764 doubles it removed. And then I would set it flat because you don't want set smooth. And then I always renamed everything to be whoever their name was and moved it to layer one. Once the text was on layer one, uh, we had these two different circles here, text circle one, text circle two. Um, that's actually a bad example because it comes as one piece. Okay, so we have an executive producer here, which I guess I'm an executive producer. Yay me, right? Um, so we have these two. They're both text converted to mesh. Uh, and in the modifiers tab, uh, we put them on a curve. Any, pretty much the names, if the name was by itself, goes on the bottom circle, which is text circle two. And then the top one went on text circle one. So they could both be animated independently of each other. So that moves like that. Everything pretty much just scrolls around in a circle. Really actually a super, super basic credit reel when you really think about it. It would be super boring if it weren't for the fact it was in 360. So you can, as you're watching the 360 version, you can actually look around and see the credits coming from the one side disappearing to the other. Now to make the credits appear and disappear, because 360 video is so unlike anything you've ever worked with. And I don't care if you've done video before or not. I'm, assume, <laughs> I'm assuming most of you probably have not done a whole lot of video in the past. But this is just so different than anything else. Because unlike normal video where you have a camera that points a single direction, like this camera looks... It looks like you're just pointing in front of it. So you can put anything you want behind the camera and it doesn't pick up. This picks up everything. So when I started off, I was like, where, how do I make this work? Where does the text come from? Where does it go to? You know, if you have it scroll from top to bottom, it still really doesn't work because the camera's going to pick something up way up here. It's going to pick things way down there. Off to the side, same thing. It just keeps getting smaller. Like, how am I going to make this just appear? So I did this circular kind of thing 
and had it fade in and out. So to achieve that fading aspect, I had to actually animate the materials. And this is all rendered with cycles. Um, actually, if you use the Blender internal render, at least at the time of this recording, you do not have the options to do an echo rotate. You don't have the option to do 360 video, is what it boils down to. So I had to do this all in cycles, which is not a big deal. I have a relatively powerful GPU. Wasn't a big deal. I mean, it is 2,000 some odd frames, 2,003 to 90. So yeah, it took like four hours to render out, but yeah, whatever. Uh, so basically what I had to do for the animation here, um, starting at Red 5's first frame, we I had to use a mix shader and I had to mission in a transparent. So to start with, it's completely transparent. You don't see it. As the mesh comes into existence, basically, um, it, the emission is turned up to a value of one. And when the time hits that it hits one, it also becomes completely um, not opaque. Is that opaque? What's, I feel like I'm using the wrong word. Transparent, opaque. Um, yeah, showing my, my ignorance of terms here. It became completely visible. We'll, we'll just put it that way. It was not transparent at all anymore. It was the opposite of trans I feel like that's opaque, but maybe I'm right. I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to deal on it. People don't care about me arguing with myself. Uh, and then I basically left the materials alone till it got here. And then as it started fading away, it hit a point where I again put keyframes in and then took the emission down and made it to be fully transparent again. And now the reason that I lowered the emission value is because if I left the emission value at one, even though the material is completely transparent, I was getting these weird artifacts. And I think it actually dealt even more with as it was fading out. Because, okay, I don't know why that's not showing anything. Here we go. As a material, and now this is, this is kind of hard to explain, but I am in a completely black environment, okay? The instant I create any light, it is visible. That's probably a super horrible example. Uh, basically, the reason I had to do this is because if I did not modify the transparency of it, it pretty much just appeared full white. You never really saw it as anything less than full white. It was just there complete. It just pretty much popped in on its frame. This way, at least it kind of fades in. Like you have... It's maybe 10 frames, maybe, where it's like, oh, wait, yeah, something's appearing. And it kind of slowly fades in. Without that, if I just adjusted the emission, it was just not there. Next frame, boom, it's there. There was really no visible fade in because it's just emitting light. And with nothing for this light to actually act upon, whether the light value is 0 or 1 or 20, it still looked just the same amount of brightness to the camera, if that makes any sense. So I had to do a transparency as well to actually get the effect of the item fading in. And then this blah, 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 runs for a while. Um, this was completely my idea here. I just thought it would be super cool to blow something up in 360 video. So basically, and this was without their knowledge. Well, I mean, obviously they knew about it when they saw the final clip. But they didn't mention this, and I didn't mention it. I just kind of did it, and I was like, well, I hope they like it. If not, we'll just cut it. No big deal. But I uh, I did a particle system and then an explosion modifier on this text. So watching it in 360 is actually pretty impressive because it explodes, and you can kind of look around. And it's hard to do because it lasts such a short period of time. But you can look around and actually see, like, the items flying past your head and stuff. It's really, really impressive to watch in 360. Now this was all rendered out as just white text on a black background. Um, and I should have, so I'm gonna kind of throw in a tutorial here for you guys, cause why not? That's what I do. I wanna go to desktop. Sorry about the train. Um, I'm gonna try a test. I have no idea what this is. Good, good, it's nothing embarrassing. Okay, I don't know where that clip went. There we go. Okay. 
So we have this test mp4 file. I don't even know why I'm doing it this way. I should just do this. Boom. Okay. So that's going to take forever to try to process through because it's, I want to say 3840 by 1920 is the resolution. But we have a video here. And I'm now going to add images. And this is going to be the credits. So all of the credits were rendered out as individual PNGs. Now, I like doing this. And this was a trick I learned, and it's not really even a trick. This is something I learned a long time ago when I first started doing video. Um, and I forget where I read this or where I heard it from somebody online. Um, but basically, the idea was if something happens with your render and it messes up, you can start back up at whatever your last good frame was and go forwards. It's harder to do with video because video is all interwoven together so it's a little more difficult to work with if there's bad frames you need to fix or you lose power or something your whole file becomes corrupt well if it's an image you only the last image gets corrupted and everything else is still fine okay so i just grabbed a, a handful of them i didn't want to do all of them i don't there's really no reason to um to actually use these on top of the other clip i believe we did the lower clip first then the upper clip then we add effect strip was it add? Yeah, and then we add. So, and this is actually what they did for the end credits. Um, I probably should explain a little bit about the project. So I don't know if it's really worthwhile doing because I'm going to link to it in the description. And this will potentially end up on an episode at some point, sometime. Not me saying that it'll end up on an episode probably. Unless Robbie decides to do that just to be funny, which he might. I don't know. But they were, it was the 10th season of their show which is category 5 technology tv and so they were shooting the whole thing in 360 video he wanted the credits that he could use on the end over clips from in studio that were going to be in 360 so it only made sense to have the credits in 360 so i did this and you have these pretty much white credits that then scroll across the screen of whatever in their studio whether it was just a blank shot or it was people doing cleanup or people turning handstands and cartwheels. I don't, I haven't seen it yet, honestly. I don't even know if it's uploaded yet. From what I hear, it's a, I heard it was two hours or far. I think it was a two hour special. It's like a half million frames taking like 50 hours to render out. So yeah, pretty big, pretty big undertaking. So this was uh, kind of the behind the scenes look at the credits. Once the video goes live, you know, I'm not even going to say that because this won't go live till the video goes live. Um, you can find the episode from Category 5 TV. That'll be linked in the description. And also linked will be my website to the page that has a little more information about this. Um, along with some download links. What you download will probably be this exact file. I don't really feel like there's any reason... So why not just download this file? Maybe I'll delete the people's names. I don't know. But it'll be something similar to this. Um, obviously, all this text is useless. You can't, you can't do anything with it. It's, it's a mesh. You can't retype it and change it. So you'll have to pretty much just look at the text here and make that work yourself. And that just reminded me of something tabbing into edit mode there. How are these are animated on this curve? I didn't explain that at all. So let me do that. So we have the text, which is a mesh object, and I keep losing my mouse. Um, and watch the location here. You'll notice that it's only changing on the X location. And now that is because it is following a curve. So if I turn off the visibility on the curve here, it's just moving in a straight line. But because it's following the curve, uh, turn that back on because it's following the curve it makes it move in this three quarters of a circle uh, the number 40 there's nothing magic about that's just a number i found worked i did 40 32 24 16 and 8 uh, technically zero should be here but i don't think it actually is pretty sure zero does not end up being exactly behind camera uh, it might be but I didn't have to go behind the camera, so it didn't matter. But that's how that works. 
you can actually see it really well with the 3D cursor there, not the 3D cursor, but the object manipulator. Um, you'll notice it's moving sideways when the text is way over on the circle thing moving around. So that's how that works. And to, uh, to put your own text in there, you're basically just going to layer two in the file. Clicking on your text, tabbing into edit mode, changing this to be, you know, whatever you want to write. Then I suggest duplicating that with Shift D. Then Alt C to convert to mesh. And then move it to layer one. And then from layer one, we say we want to put this to the curve modifier. Text circle one. And then we want to mess around with the X location to move this text. And that's really all there is to it. Super easy, super simple. Ooh, one other thing to mention before I end. If you are, ooh, if you're gonna do text that you want to put on the second layer, you need to put a carriage return in front of your text so it sits lower. Otherwise you can manually adjust it, but you won't necessarily have a perfect match. Like, let me find one here. Uh, Jeff Weston here. When this was a text file, that there was a carriage return, so it lined up on this. I accidentally forgot to do that on one. You'll never notice, though, because I just manually matched it to be at the exact same level as all of those. So that is that. Hopefully this was helpful. If you downloaded this file and couldn't know how to use it, hopefully this explained how to use it. Uh, and showed you how to put it on top of 360 video so you can actually use these credits for something. Uh, not these credits as in these exact ones. Please don't just render out these credits and use them for something that they were not in. That's just uncool. Though it is kind of free advertising for all these people, including myself. So maybe you should do that. I'm kidding. Don't. Don't do that. This is just an example. It's meant for you to work with it. You can do things. I mean, the this is a curve. So... You can stretch things out. You can, you should be able to rotate these. Here we go. So you can make your text do different things. I mean, you wouldn't probably want to do that in front of the camera because you won't be able to read it. But off to the sides, you know, you could do, you could do goofy things with it. Um, and then if you did do something and you want both to match, you can always just duplicate this, Shift D, copy it down one space and delete this one and then rename this one curve two and yeah keep right on with it so yeah that is that's that i will shut up now and let you get to making your very own 360 credits for all of your 360 videos